when, when the bleep are we, we going, going to use that? that? Before we apply what we've learned about percentages, we need to go back to the basics and talk about a couple of the prerequisite skills that we'll need in order to apply what we know about percentages. To start, let's talk about percentages turning into decimals. There's a couple methods. The first would be to divide the percentage by 100. You can either do this manually or make a calculator moment. 39%. To turn 39% to a decimal, I would take 39 divided by 100 in my calculator. I would end up with 0 0.039. The other method, which is a great shortcut, because we're dividing by 100, that's two decimal places. So you just need to move the decimal two places to the left. You can observe that above by looking at 39% and 0 0.39. They're very similar, it's just a placement of the decimal. So if I took, for example, 5%, I'm going to move the decimal place over two places. The decimal is located right after the 5. So I'm move once to the right, twice to the right. Any gaps that are left by these little arrows, you can draw on the arrows if it helps you remember, I'm going to fill those in with zeros. Where the last arrow ends up is where my decimal point is going to go. So I end up with 0 0.05. Multiplying decimals is one of those skills that could easily be taken care of by a calculator moment. However, if you want to challenge yourself and try things by hand, here's a little refresher. Step one, set up your multiplication as if it's vertical multiplication. So right up and down on top of each other. So if I was doing 72 times 0.34, I would set it up just like that. Step two, ignore that decimal. The actual calculation, the step-by-step -step calculations, are going to look exactly the same whether you have that decimal or whether you don't have that decimal. It's going to get added back in at the end. Multiply like normal. So 4 times 2 is 8. 7 times 4 is 28. I'm going to drop down, move a space over, so I might include a 0. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 7 is 21. I add those up. I get 2,448. The number of decimals in your final answer is the same as the number of decimals in the values that you're multiplying together. So I originally had 0.34, so that's two decimal places. 72 didn't have any places after the decimal, so I need to find two decimal places. Again, this could all be taken care of using your calculator. One very common application of percentages is to find the amount that you're tipping, the amount that you're being taxed, or the amount that you're saving on a discount. Now this is just the amount that you're paying or saving extra. It doesn't include the cost of your bill, the cost of your total check. In order to do this, we start by turning the percentage into a decimal, which we just reviewed. So I'm going to take 18%. I'm going to move that decimal place over two places to the left. So it's going to give me 0.18. Next step, multiply the decimal by the total value. So we're going to use this uh, restaurant receipt up here. We had a total cost of $9.72. I need to tip on the total amount, $9.72. So I'm going to multiply that by my percentage. In this case, I need to use 0.18. Decimals are used for calculation, whereas percentages are used for communication. So I'm going to take 0.18 times 9.72 or $9.72. Again, we can do it by hand if we feel courageous or pull out that calculator for a great calculator moment. Either way, you get 1.75. Now remember, we're dealing with a word problem, a real life situation, so you need a real life unit. So that's $1.75. Always circle your answer so we can find it. Let's try another one. What if you uh, felt a, a little more gracious and respectful for your uh, waiter that night? You want to give a 20% tip. So I'm going to take 20% and turn it into a decimal. That's two places to the left. So 0.2. Now you can leave the zero on there. You don't have to. I leave it on just so you can see the comparison between 20% and its decimal counterpart. I'm going to take that decimal, multiply it by my total. So 0.2 times $9.72. Quick calculator moment gives me a dollar ninety-four. Remember, if we're dealing with a real-world situation, you need to use a real-world unit. On your own, 
using that coupon, how much money will the 35% coupon save you? If you wanted to know the total amount that you'd be paying at checkout, not just the amount that the coupon is saving you, you would need to use one of two different methods. The first method, turn the percentage into a decimal, which we should be getting really great at because we've done it a few times. So I'm going to take down here for my example, I have a 70% off coupon of a $94.50 amount of items. So I'm going to take 70%, move that decimal over two places, get 0.7. Again, you can leave the zero, you don't need to. Next, I'm going to multiply the total by the decimal I just found. So my total is $94.50 times 0.7. Quick calculator moment, unless you're feeling brave, multiply it together. Now, this does not give us our total amount yet. This method, a lot of students tend to forget that there's a last step. So be careful with this method. Step three, subtract this product from the total amount. So I'm going to subtract what I just got, $66.15, from the total amount that I was originally spending. So $94.50 minus seven, or $66.15 gives me $28.35. The $66.15 is what I'm saving, so I need to subtract it from my total. There's my final answer. Now method two I like a little bit better because it has a clear ending. Not that last step where you have to subtract one more time. Step one, turn the percentage into a decimal. We are pros at this, so I'm going to move it over. I get 0.7. Step two, subtract this new decimal from one. So again, this could be a quick calculator moment. One minus 0.7. I write out my work so I can model what I'm going to be typing in. I get 0.3. I'm going to then take this new decimal and I'm going to multiply it by the total value. So my total value of what I would be paying for my total items is $94.50. I'm going to multiply it by 0.3. I end up with the same exact answer. On your own, try these two problems. Apply what we just did. If you don't quite grasp the concept yet, rewind and review. After you've answered both of these questions, take a moment and answer this think, pair, share. Who spent less between customer A and customer B? If you ever wanted to find the total amount with a tax or tip added on, we would need to follow one of two methods. The first method, we would turn the percentage into a decimal. So if I took 18% tip on a $32.50 bill, I'm going to move that decimal over two places to the left, and I get 0.18. I'm going to multiply the total by this decimal. So my total is $32.50. I'm going to multiply those two together. Again, a quick calculator moment. I get $5.85. Remember, this is the amount that's being taxed or tipped. This last step, you need to remember to add this product, the multiplication, the 5.85 that we just got. You need to add that product to your total amount. A lot of students tend to forget this step, so be careful with this method. So I'm going to add those together. My total bill would be $38.35 with my tip. The other method, I'm going to turn my percentage into a decimal yet again, move it over two places, 0.18. Step two, multiply this decimal, or sorry, add this new decimal to one. One plus 0.18 gives me 1.18. I'm going to then multiply this new sum by the total amount. Multiply it together, I get the exact same answer. On your own, try these two problems. If you're still struggling with the concept, rewind and review. Once you've answered the two problems, answer the think pair share in the middle. Who spent more, customer A or customer B?